Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now moving forward, uh, this is going to be our first uh, speaker session. And the session is going to be uh, conducted by Sunayan Mitra. He is Vice President and Business Head Beverages, Nestle India. And uh, he is going to be uh, addressing the gathering on Art of uh, Brewing a Brand. Mr. Mitra started his career with Perfetti in 1997 and spent a decade in various exciting sales and marketing roles that included building the brand Alpenliebe, Centerfresh and Happy Dent. He joined Nestle in 2006 in the coffee business and has done several key marketing roles including marketing manager for Nescafe in India and global brand manager for Nescafe at the Nescafe headquarters in Switzerland. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you all are also using our hashtag top 50 brands in the meanwhile. And uh, yes, as you can see on to the right or the left side, we are also showcasing uh, all the tweets, uh, live tweets that are happening right here. Uh, do not forget to tweet using hashtag top 50 brands. And uh, yes, I think we are almost done. So ladies and gentlemen, I would request uh, Mr. Mitra to please come and join us on stage. And please give him a, welcome him with a huge round of applause. So I can, I can stand here and present. Yes, sir, thank you, thank you. Sure, so thank you. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. It's indeed a privilege to be here and to be addressing you all on uh, what I'm going to talk of in the next 20 minutes is the art of brewing a brand. Uh, the operating word here is art, so that is left to interpretations, that, that's the beauty of art. So what is correct in certain situations, maybe not so correct in others, and in sometimes it can be completely wrong. So what I'm going to talk of in the, over the next 20 minutes is some of my in interpretations, some of our interpretations at Nestle, and I leave it to you to interpret it the way you believe it's correct for yourself. So thank you for that kind int introduction. 11 years back when I walked into Nestle, I was not so clear of, the, of how, how this company is. Uh, I'm not so sure how, how many of you know, I didn't when I joined, that it's the largest FMCG company in the world. 2017 audited results show uh, a turnover of close to 90 billion US dollars. So that's the scale at which Nestle operates globally. And amongst that, one of the, how do I start the presentation? Okay. How, how do I move, move there? Yes. Okay. So thank you for that. One of the jewels of Nestle, one of the key brands of Nestle has worldwide is Nescafe with a brand valuation of 12.6 billion US. Huh? So it's a massive brand. It is sold in over 180 countries. 180 countries across the world sells Nescafe. And in India, if I'll come down to India, it is 26 million cups are sold, have consumed every day. So that is the, the size of our interactions with consumers in, in this market. So what I'm going to talk about is a little generic, but it will borrow heavily from what we have done in Nescafe, how over the years we have built Nescafe and uh, in the space where it is to today. Now, the ingredients for building a brewing a great brand, first, identify, identify who you're talking to. That is, I think, the most critical step for doing any of the others. Then, of course, once you've identified them, you have to be them, you have to live as if you are them, and that's how, once you're relevant to, to them, once you're aspiring to them, once you're inspiring to them, you create brand love. And where you do it, the activations, there also you need to be where your target audience is. So this is, in short, the summary of what I'm going to talk, talk of, how we have done, uh, pre-built this brand, Nescafe, over the years. Now, identifying is the most critical one. And identifying 
the way we have identified our consumers are life enthusiasts. Now, in at Nestle, we use type typologies because what matters not so much is, of course, it does, but a bigger, uh, bigger point is not so much the age or the income only. It goes beyond that. It goes into your attitude. And I'll give a, a small example, maybe an extreme one, to explain uh, what we are talking about. And at the risk of, uh, well, not at the risk of, without type typecasting anyone, suppose we talk of two ind individuals similar in age. One, those of you who have been in FMCG sales would know that in the sales channel in India, one of the richest channel members are the whole wholesalers. And suppose we look at a wholesaler out of the Delhi Sadar Bazaar. And suppose we look at a similar kind age group of a person who's operating, who's working in an IT com company in Del Delhi only, but working for a multinational IT company. They may earn the same kind of money, but the kind of consumption which they will have, the kind of marketing which will appeal to them can be completely different. The kind of products you will, you will reach out to and the kind of messaging you will do are completely different. So it is not only about age, it is not only about gender or where do they come from, it is about their attitude, it's about what, how we can uh, uh, divide them into type, typologies. So life enthusiasts are the ones we are looking at for Nescafe who are independent and unapologetically young of course, now when you do in that type typology, when you see their age group, when you see their income, they of course there's a huge skew on youngsters of the age of 20 to 24 years. So all that comes as, as a part of it. But the way we identify uh, our target is life en enthusiasts. And what we have to do is we have to see what coffee can do. What is your product? What is that a Nescafe of Nescafe can do? And we pitch the strong stimulation of Nescafe into the center of these life and enthusiasts. So in short, this is where is the most critical part where you can be as narrow as possible, as sharp as possible, because the rest of it flows from, from, from there. Once you've identified, the next part is you don't just target them, you have to be them. You have to talk their language. You have to be sharp enough to, to sometimes be a little scared that am I talking, am I being too uh, uh, sharp? The more you identify your target audience, the more easy it will be for, for us to talk in their language. And once we start talking in their language, once we figure out what are their passions, what are their pain points, only then can we start creating brand, brand love. So marry that to the, what the product can bring. So coffee has stimulation. Coffee has the, the ability to recharge. So the need for stimulation and recharge has to be the center of the, the, the insight of what this target audience wants. So once we do that, we can urge them to take on everyday challenges of life by providing the stimulation which Nescafe can, 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 can bring. Now these are stills from the communication which has happened over the last four or five years. I'm not going to play all of them. Uh, many of you would have seen them, but all of them are talking out to youngsters. All of them are talking out in a language which talks to these, these life and enthusiasts and are unapologetically young. Now the part which I will talk of is is the, the one of one campaign where it's in the same zone, but here was born the idea of how youngsters' daily cup of resolve can be Nes Nescafe. So I hope it plays now.
So this was the campaign uh, which was one of uh, which was playing in a couple of years back, and uh, when, once you talk that language, once you talk what is rel relevant, you slowly see your brand scores going up, and you slowly see you are making a difference in uh, becoming a loved brand. But our job doesn't end there. Our challenge in coffee is to change behavior. It's an it's a tea drinking market. India is the largest tea, white tea drinking market in the world. So it's a massive tea drinking market. And tea, as you know, is a much more milder, pleasant drink than coffee, which is sharper, which is bitter. Well, you can add sugar to reduce the bitterness, but the heart of coffee is that it is a bitter drink, the beverage. So we, are, we have this uh, amazing challenge of changing behavior, influencing behavior, and in marketing, in brand, brand building, uh, I think it is one of, one of the biggest challenges or most exciting challenges to have if you can do that. So we have a brand which has scores fairly high on brand love. But we have a market also where you have consumption which is much less than what it could be. So Nescafe's job as the market leaders also is to create the market expand coffee consumption and uh, be relevant to youngsters who start not only loving you but consuming you. So there was the challenge of creating changing behavior by creating brand relevance and building coffee ex expertise. How to do it is fairly fundamental marketing and that's the beauty of in some ways of marketing that across categories these fundamental tenets remain the same. Uh, you may do it differently, but if you pull back, these are the things you have to do category after cat category. So one is building in a market which doesn't drink coffee as much as they drink other be beverages. You have to tell people who should drink coffee, how should they make that, that coffee, and when should they have it. Now, of course, not in this way. You have to tell them in a way that it's exciting, it's inspiring, it's relevant to, to them. And along with it, you have to also answer this critical question of, okay, I know all of that. Who should drink? Why should they drink? Oh, who should drink? How should they make it? When should they drink it? But the most critical question is why. Why is it, what does your brand do which caters to or which answers the need of my life? So these are the two broad tenets or broad pillars on which we based our strategy. So the first one was, to get into the insight. And that is where, the, that's the other part where you have to be very careful that the insight has to be as sharp as possible, but as relevant as possible. So we looked at our, our target audience and we, we wanted to reach out to them when they are at the cusp of change in their lives. So from going from school to college, the first time you go to college to uh, un university, or when you are going from education, from when you finished your education and going into your first job. So that is where behaviors change in a significant way. So coffee can play a role, role there because that's also a change. And the youngsters of t today, they look forward to this intensity. They look forward to this working insane hours in a day is not a bother for them. They look forward to being busy. Their attitude is bring it on, I'm changing gears. So that's where relevance of coffee comes in. Because today, I'm changing gears, and gentle won't do anymore. That's why I don't care if it's, if it's a stronger drink. But if it's something which, which can affect or which can, which can solve one of my, my needs, I am re ready for it. So the first communication which I will show it to you, which was launched last year, uh, it was the end of last year, was talking people, taking people through the, the first three parts, which is who should consume, when to consume, and how to consume. Rohan? Rohan?
So post that, we had to also answer why. It says, it, here it says, the father saying, telling his very proud father, telling his son, who just got through a un university of choice, which is, which is what Indian youngsters study for. He says that your life is going to change. But what is that, that change? We also need to spell it out in a way that's inspiring, it's re relevant, and people look forward to it. So there was born the second film, which ex inspires the youth to change the behavior. Once you've got the language right, you need to reach out to, to them where, where they are. Now, this is where I'll spend the least amount of time, uh, where digital is it's the, it's the age of digital. So that is where you need to be, where youngsters are, whom you are tar targeting. And also on ground, it's a very critical part of marketing, where if you're changing habits, you need to be present on, on ground as well, not only on, on air. And you need to also extend the idea. It's not only one communication which changes behavior. If it did, life would have been so much easier for mark marketers. But you need to extend that idea and make it re relevant. So this is in Bombay, where uh, a couple of weeks back, this was the kind of rains which every year hits. Now what happens in Bombay, those who are from Bombay or have been to Bombay quite often, you know that every year there are a couple of days which is washed out. But the spirit of Bombay lives on and they just don't care. They go to office, they go to work, they go to school, college, as if there's no problem. They can walk hours, but every year they, they, they do it unfailingly. So here's where Nes Nescafe can play a role in the same way that it's only rain. That's the Bombay spirit. Take back your day. So this is what is a campaign which is going out in Bombay right now, where uh, we have these uh, outdoors and print, which it says that when it rains, you pour. The rain will do its things, it, you do yours. That's the spirit of Bombay. And we had this uh, innovation also up. If the lights can be pulled pull down. The lights can be reduced, please. So this is a holding in Bombay act actual shot where you, it, this is what, what it is going out in trying to build this, this uh, message of changing your pace, not giving up, not giving in, but moving on. Use where Nescafe plays, plays a role. Finally, in Brindling Brands, you need to continually measure. There's a lot which you do on strategy. There's a lot which you put down as what should be the way. But so many times you get surprised that you know consumers get something else. So it's very important in building brands that we keep on measuring what are the success parameters. So we are in closed period. Nestle India is a public limited company. So we cannot talk of our results have not been declared H1 results. So internal results I can't speak of. But external results I will pick up two parts. One is the brand. So this is how top of mind has has moved on, and I can see some of the colleagues from IMRB who are there, who are doing this, this, this track. And uh, you can see the movement post our launch of these two campaigns, both on top of mind and on most often, often consumed brand. The other one is market share. So this is not absolute market share. Again, it's, uh, it's not needed. What are we looking at is delta, that each month, have you gained market share or has competition gained market share? So if you see the after we launched the campaign, 
Month on month, we have gained market share. So if I explain, 3.8, the last one, is in that month of June 18, Nescafe gained 380 basis point of market share. So these are not absolute, I repeat. These are gains on that month. So this is how we measure whatever we, 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 we do. Often we have to tweak, we have to change track, we have to ensure that what we are saying makes is relevant and is liked by the consumers. So that's all I had for the current campaign. What I would leave you with is also a sneak preview of another campaign which is global, which uh, talks in a very different space on Nescafe, but for Nescafe Gold, where, which is positioned on moments that matter. So it's an international campaign, but it's a glo global camp campaign which uh, builds another very critical brand in our portfolio, which is Nescafe Gold.